just can drive me to a different way. Or I go to the prison, or I'm gonna be dead, or I'm gonna be disabled, you know? Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to Anyone Anywhere podcast. So today I have the great pleasure to have with me Jackson Souza. And let me do a quick intro about Jackson. So Jackson is a professional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter and grappling competitor. Jackson is from Rio de Janeiro. And let me tell you some of his one. He won a BJJ World Championship. He is a World Nogi Champion, European Champion, and Pan American Nogi Champion. This is just some of, of the accomplishments that Jackson had. Currently, Jackson is living in London and is the head coach of Checkmat London Jiu Jitsu. First of all, Jackson, thank you. It's an honor to have you in the show. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me today, this morning. A little bit cold in London. Um, no doubt it's going to be it's cold as well in Berlin. So, yeah, man, I feel good. Thank you so much. So, yes, in Appreciate Berlin you. here, it's, it's like, <laughs> I think it's similar to London now. Similar, exactly. So, my public, it's, and the persons that listen to the podcast it's it's uh, it's going from the the jiu-jitsu fighters and jiu-jitsu lovers to somebody that don't understand nothing about jiu-jitsu and don't know nothing can you do a quick uh, intro about you what you do what is jiu-jitsu please when you where you come from please so i'm originally from brazil you know rio de janeiro but i'm from the favela it's called Cantagalo, you know, where we have uh, many champions, many like world champions as well, like Fernando Tererê, Alain Fifo, and other guys. So my favela is, uh, is a place where everybody wants to visit because we quite have a like, great view from the top of the favela and then everyone wants to come up to the top to, you know, to see the Copacabana, Ipanema, Lebron, and all the beautiful views that people, you know, like to see. And Jiu-Jitsu is a, is a martial art, you know, who actually born in India and then was developed a little bit in, in Japan, even from Japan, went straight to Brazil. And then from Brazil, you know, the Grace family are just like, spread the jiu-jitsu words around the world, you know? And uh, it's a martial art where we use self-defense as well. You know, it's not only about grappling. Jiu-jitsu wants a self-defense and also grappling. If you know a little bit of, about uh, Greek Romano wrestling, it's, it's kind of similar, also similar to judo, but the judo is a fight stand and jiu-jitsu we also fight on the ground, you know, that's the jiu-jitsu, you know. Uh, of course, with a lot of dedication from the Great Risk family, you know, they, they manage you know, to develop a lot of techniques, you know, and also give the opportunity to teach for other people. And today, you know, it's so huge all over the world. And now each day we have so many teams that they are doing their own like system of training, you know. So now we don't only have a Grace family, but also have a, you know, other other team like Checkmat, Alliance, Atos, and 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 so on. You know, if I if I gonna say all the team here, it's gonna cost a lot of time. But is I think Jiu Jitsu is that, you know, but also I love the fact that Jiu Jitsu unites everybody in in one in one place, you know once coming to the competition scenario and also you manage to you know to see each other to see the people to talk about to, to exchange knowledge i think that's the beauty of the jiu-jitsu you know for me is uh priceless you no know? i don't i don't feel anything that it's gonna interfere or, do, got, or just gonna damage our our jiu-jitsu because even though we are from different things but once coming 
together is just one flag, you know, we carry the Jiu Jitsu flag, you know, you know, so I don't want to say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because if I say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's kind of like a, only for Brazil, but I like to say only Jiu Jitsu because I put everybody in the bubble, you know, it's like that. Exactly. Totally agree with you. I think we, it's much better to, to fight united than by dividing. And exactly. And why did you start competing? So actually, uh, I started competing just because um, I always see, I always, I always just watching, you know, Terere, Alan Fifo, Bruno Matia, all those fights from Cantagallo competing uh, internationally, nationally. And, and they was, was like fighting at the same time, bring like a medals to the, to the favela, you know? And then everyone, the favela was proud of them, you know? And then this kind of like uh, energy starts to come around my body because I want to be like them as well. Because Terere, I think Terere was the main guy because, because he was the guy who was traveling a lot. He was already a, like a world champion as a, as a blue belt. And he was the guy who brought Jiu-Jitsu to the community as well. We started to organize social project. And then he managed to create a project with my master, Ricardo Vieira, which is called the Amigos do Morro, you know, a friend of, of Favela, you know. And then I, I realized that if I, if I train it every day like this, in the future, I can be a, a good competitor, a good fighter. And I can start to also bring it like a medal to my community and make my, my people and my family proud of me, you know. And one thing that, 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 that pushed me really, 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 really hard to compete when I was watching Terere, you know, traveling the world, doing seminar, competing, winning, and bring it back to the community and share with, 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 with us, with the favela, like clothes, you know, uh, sponsors. Every time Terere was coming back to the, to the community, he was bring a lot of stuff to give it back to the community, you know, I've been Remember when he was when he have like a Adidas sponsor, he managed to bring a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff from the from Adidas and start to give to the community, you know. Also, Cicrone, that's another brand as well that he was wearing in the competition. He was also bring a lot of stuff to the community and give to people. And I realized that if I if I do that if I do that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be very proud of myself as well. And they're going to be also proud of myself. And also, I can inspire other kids to do the same in the future, you know. I think that was the, the, the reason that I started to compete, you know. Because I want to be like them. I want to travel like them. I want to make money like them. I want to get a good sponsor like them, you know. Just because them... I never stop training. I always focus that one day I will become a good fight. But it's a process. It's not about oh you training here, you're gonna you're gonna win tomorrow. It's not like that. Uh, back that back the time I was uh, really young. Uh, didn't have a lot of sponsor money to afford to my competitions. So, but uh, but I was on the mat every single day training, even though. I was like uh, in between training and work and work because I had to give, um, I had to help my family, my mama at home, you know, because I lost my, my, my dad when I was eight. So my mama just became like a father and, and mama at the same time. And, and of course, as a young boy, you see anything can go wrong if you have like a, uh, a weak mindset. You can go always a different way, but I start. I decide to have the jitsu by my side, just to give me a, like a better lifestyle and became a fighter. You know. Love it, love it, and love your your history. Like coming, like you are a fighter since since a young age. Like, how did you yeah. think like that? 
do you think that coming from from a, a favela and losing your father at a young age do you think uh, that helped you to to become a a, a professional a world class fighter um yeah because you know i knew i knew everything what my 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 father was doing you know was nothing nothing good nothing to inspire me nothing to inspire other people as well you know yeah unfortunately he was part of the the gang you know and then in when i was 80 he died because you know something happened between him and the gang and um yeah i knew that this could not go, could not be good for me because this can can just can drive me to a different way or i go to the prison or i'm going to be dead or i'm going to be disabled you know on the wheelchair so i just decide for myself if you like when i was 80 80 years old i think my mind was already very strong because i start to work very young when i was 8 You, same year my, my 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 father died i start to work i never taste like a, a taste of work in my mouth when i was a kid i was just about study and stay with my brother and sisters but when my 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 dad passed away you know my mama didn't have any job we didn't have any job no food sometimes and then i, I decided to just go a way to try to get some money and bring some food to my brother and sister because I'm the second oldest and my brother was the my older brother as well was come with me to to the street to make money and and help my family and that's the time I start to you know to hustle you know going to the central of Brazil you know ask, ask people on the street for some money you know not to buy drugs or buy lunch my idea was to get some money from the people ask people on the street to go to the factory to buy uh sweets and start to sell on a train on a bus or on the street you know that was my 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 work when i was eight, nine, and then 10 when i reached the number 10 when i was 10 years old I found the jitsu when I was like in favela Cantagalo and then my 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 friend Alexandre Ribeiro Buda today is a is a brown belt on the Fernando Pereira also he he was the guy who brought me to jiu jitsu you know and then you keep it like train together competing together but unfortunately I don't know what's happened he went a different way and then he get involved and then he went to the prison because he was like like the you know mm -hmm. the you know what i mean and and then he he's you know he he the the you know he spent some time in the prison then he came back and then he stopped that now he's back in jiu jitsu now he's starting competing again start to win again now he's a, one of the Terere coach in uh in Cantagalo, you know and then that's that was my my beginning you know i think my mindset was already like very strong enough because i was having a lot of like uh, experience on the street seeing a lot of people talk to people and but I never but i never done anything bad that's gonna complement badly to my lifestyle to my life you know i was i was the, i was the guy who was working really hard to to give like a a comfortable place or comfortable comfortable uh unite between me and my family you know that was my my intention you know but when i found jiu jitsu you know my mind was already good enough to understand that this if i do this for long i can be like today i can be like a lumpy fool 
I can be like my master Ricardo Vieira, you know, and it was kind of like a easy to integrate myself to that to that journey, to this yeah. journey. Beautiful, and and it's such a journey of like since the beginning, like working. And after coming, like exactly since the beginning, you had to have a, a strong mindset. And I wanted yeah. to ask you, uh, um, it's something that you develop by the circumstance or do you think that it comes with you, that, that kind of strong mindset? I think that's coming from the circumstance because I was, as a young, you know, you see everything, you know, you see that who's, if, if someone hates you, you know, the people who hate you, they're gonna forget about this. But if you receive, you know, the hit, you're never gonna forget. And then you know what's good, what's bad. I could divide this since when I was a kid, I could divide this. This is good, this is not good. You know, even, even when people say, oh, don't eat, don't eat too much sweet because this is, this is bad. But for us, as a kid, this is good because we are kid. We don't we don't think. But when when we reach the age that the sweet is not very good for you because we can became like a diabetic or something like this, you you can divide. Okay, this is not good. I gotta go this way because I'm not young anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah, I I think I think I think you know I'm sure. My mind was already prepared for for that because the circumstance, because the life I was having with my fun, because the hard work, because the situation that my mama was was facing as well, you know, my brothers, you know, even until today, I never managed to finish my high school because I I be I stay away from the school for a few years. I never had the chance to to finish because someone have to work to put the the food on the table to my for my family, you know. And this person was me and and my brother. All right, my mama also was doing something very good for us, like uh, working a family place, washing, cleaning, you know, take care of like uh, old people as well, you know. She was work really hard. But she never had the the chance also to finish her high school, and she never had the chance to have a, like a, a a work with um we call like carteira assinada with a contract. You know what I mean? So thank God today she have a a job with a contract. She live it very well, you know. Thank God I manage I manage also to to buy a house for my mom as well when I. You know, that was my big dream. My dream was like to become a, a fighter for a champ, a world champ for 10, five times world champ. This never was my goal in, in Jiu Jitsu. My goal was, of course, I want to compete. I want to, I want to win. I want to be a champion. I don't want, I don't really care if it's going to be world champion, no gi, Pan America. I don't really care. I just want to make sure. I provide to my family true jiu-jitsu, you know, doing jiu-jitsu, you know. And in 2016, I managed to succeed and, and, and I bought a house for my mom, you know. Not for my mom, but for my, for my family, you know. Now we live together, you know, even though I'm in, I'm in London, but I'm, I'm feel, I feel good that they have like a place, you know, to them to put the... the Especially now, my mom have have her own play, home uh, room with her bed. And she can sleep like very comfortable after after hard work, and I feel good that my mom is doing well. I love it. I love. I love it, and it's like, okay, the the world championships. It's it's okay. It's amazing, but how is the feeling to to win? Because for me, that is the best, the, 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 the hugest price that you have to being mm -hmm. able to give something like a house or that you can help your family in that way. How is the feeling after you, 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 you give the keys to your mother? Man, it's, 
it's priceless, you know. Is a uh, is a uh, I think for me is more than the I uh, world champ title, you know. Um, even though you know it's it's a very really good like a uh, title for a, a lot of a lot of athletes who are dreaming to become a world champ in the United States for a BJJF. But I think I think I, I had others priority you know you know i have other priority you know in in my journey in my in my career you know um i also i'm very very grateful for all the seminar for all the gyms that who host me you know for a seminar around europe when i first came to europe back to 2012 i managed to you know make a good network with a lot of people in here i still have a good connection with them and then those people they they help me on to to build my dream to build my you know my my, my dream you know and i'm very grateful for them because because this is uh this is something that I sometimes I don't have a word to ex to express, you know, my feeling, but is it priceless? Because without those person who was who was hosting me for seminar, I couldn't manage to to buy uh, my mom myself. Because in jiu jitsu, if you don't speak English, if you don't if you don't interact with people, if you don't build your, your network, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to make money. You know what I mean? It's kind of really hard, but even though if you have a sponsor, you know, the sponsor is gonna is gonna help you help you. Of course, there's a sponsor who can pay your salary, but the salary is not gonna is not gonna buy a house for your for your mom. You know what I mean? You had to work even more harder to maintain this sponsor until you reach the number that you need to be able to afford a house. But I think the seminar was very special because I managed to deliver good services as well. I'm not just to talk about the, the money in C, but also the the work I deliver for them about my history, about my background, where I come from, what I've been accomplished, you know. And I feel like I feel like this was the you know for them was for them was huge. But for me, was big as well in in a sense of deliver a good service for them for their understanding more about jujitsu because I was training with the best guys as well like Kiriri, Leo Vieira, Ricardo Vieira. I have a lot a lot of information to pass it on. Even though after the seminar, a lot of people was asking questions about different situation. People was texting me about doing private class because there was like um how do you say it in english um um there was there was like uh there was there was feeling that they need something more hmm. you know they need something more because they 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 knew what suggest it is but they didn't have the 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 real thing like the the real search of information you know so for me coming from from a from a World, world champions, legends, for them was a wow. This guy is is training with Tere, Leo Vieira, Ricardo Vieira. He he knows a lot. Let's let's bring him here and train with him, you know. And uh, and then I I build my way. I build my way, you know, connection, and I manage to to buy the house. But is the uh, it's like I said in the beginning, it's priceless, you know, there's no word for that. I feel, of course, I feel very proud, you know, of myself who, but I, I knew, I knew that one day, no matter time, by one day in the future, because I was already, I was already a few steps ahead, you know, I was few steps ahead. And think that one day I'll make it happen. Because if Tere became a world champion five times, 
and manage to help a lot of people. I want to do the same as well. Maybe not the same like, like he did. Maybe different in a different way where I can also provide something for other people as well, which I do, so, you know. I help a lot of people as well. I see you connect with my with my with my friends in Cantagalo project, Cantagalo Jiu Jitsu, Sandrinho, Douglas Rufino, who is the guy who is the, the lead of, of Cantagalo Jiu Jitsu in Cantagalo. I see you like connect, I see you help them with something, you know. That was my my mindset. It's a process. You have to always take this by step, you know. That's the best way to to make your mind, you know, understand that there's nothing there's nothing bad when you wait for something big. There's nothing bad, but you gotta keep it going. Don't just wait and and see what's gonna happen now. When I say it's a process, you you keep it grading, you keep it talking, you keep it training, you keep it. You know, engage. You keep it doing your thing to make the the foundation, you know, the base strong. Because once you get there, you know what what exact you have to do to, with this. You know, that was my my mindset. Love it, man. Love it. And and it comes with with some questions also. Which advice you will give? for that kid with 10 years old that in this in the same situation that you were uh 20 year, almost 20 years ago and i wanted if it's possible that uh, you give it in english and also in portuguese because i want to cut a clip and also do it also for in portuguese because maybe they will see it and i want i think it's inspiring okay um I will say in English first. Um, I think as a 10 years old, sometimes, you know, the life can be tough for a few, for a few kids and for others not. Depends also the, the family background, history and education and, and circumstances of life, you know. There's a lot of things that can damage some kids' brain and and in life, in life. But my idea is to, you know, to, to try, try to always to divide what's good and what's bad, you know? Try to always get out of the bubble. When I say get out of the bubble, that's one thing that, I, that it's happened with me. When I was, when I was like 16, 18, I was, I was young, you know, I was, I was partying, I was training, I was working, I was living, but, but I, I always had in my mind that this is not good. This is not, this is good. This is not good. I was always dividing my, my, my thoughts. Of course, as a young, you, you want, you want to taste anything. I, I taste drugs. I, I smoke marijuana. It's nothing bad about this, but I stop because I know this is not good for athletes, you know? So you live in the favela, you, you are inside the bubble. You have to divide what's good for you, what's not. But once you understand that, you're gonna get out of the bubble because I'm not saying in my favela is, has a, have only bad things. No, we have a, a lot of good things good people you know we have a good foundation we have a good culture you know i love our our old people we call the our uh, velha guarda old old god you know that's the our velha guarda you know because they have a lot to say have a lot to to teach you know and but once you go out of the bubble and start to realize that the, the life outside the bubble is better. It's not better because once you're outside, you have to always, you have to keep in mind that what's good for you, what's not good for you. That's the same thing. And I realized that the world outside was good. 
and I was meeting a lot of people, you know, I was training with uh, police, I was training with uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, people who have like a different like background and education with a better conversation, with a better pronunciation. Even though I speak Portuguese, they have a better things than me because I didn't have the skill, but I realized that if I hang out with this, those people, I will learn, I will get something from them. And I'm gonna build a, a, a good friendship and a relationship with them. And then they can also provide me in the future help in case I need something. Maybe I broke my, 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 my tea. I have a doctor. If I have a problem with the police or I have a, a, a I don't know, a delegado or a police here to help me to what's going on. You know what I mean? So, and then I decided to just hang out with people with more knowledge, with more, with the back, with the good background, with more education than me. And then I started to realize that, oh, this is good. Because if I go back to my favela, we're going to talk the same thing. It's a cycle. Same thing. Same thing. Oh, Friday. Bali funk party. Let's drink. Let's smoke. Oh, the girls. Oh, you see these girls. Oh my God, she's good. I'll try. You know, all the same conversation. But not everybody. Some people that is already like a in the zone that one day he's gonna get 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 involved. One day they wanna do something else. But if you hang out with people who has a like a good mindset, understanding what's going on around you, it's easy to divide. Oh, this is not good. Oh, I go there because this guy, man, he was in a championship last year, he won. I'm gonna hang out with him, ask a few questions. Oh, this guy as well. Oh, this guy now, we have to divide, it's like that. I don't wanna hang out with people who are gonna always telling me bad thing. Hey, let's go down to the street, let's, Rob, let's do something bad. Let's do this, let's do that. No, you know, it's not for me. I wanna hang out with the guy from the favela who, who like to surf, you know, who like to go on a skateboard, the people who like to do uh, art, art dance, or maybe I wanna hang out with the girl who like the ballet, see, you know, what they uh, have to say, you know. I think my, my, my device, and everything I say is to divide what's good and what's bad. Why? What's bad also can teach you. Why bad can teach you? Because in the future, you're gonna you're gonna tell the same thing for a few friends or for a few member of your family. You know what's bad because what's bad can teach you a less as well and what's good sometimes it's too good but sometimes it's very hard to understand why this is so good and why this is bad my idea is to have a balance you know once you have a balance of both sides you're good you gotta be always in, in the me I, I like to be like almost in almost like going to the uh, right side and to the left side because you learn from both sides, you know, but my, the mind had to choose what's good and what's bad, no matter, no matter what. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love it. It's not just, it's the mind. It's the, who, who the person that you hang out with. I think like, it's very, like you also told it's, it's very important. Influence. influence. Okay. You have to have a good influence. You know, I have a great influence by my side when I was young. You know, Terere, Alain Fifo, Ricardo Vieira, Bruno Matias, Sandro Vieira, Trato, you know. Oh, and then I managed to move to Sao Paulo for a few for a few months to train with Leo Vieira. And Le in Leo Vieira, they have like uh, Marco Buchecha, Cavaca, uh, Gabriel Rolo, and... Damian Maia, André Galvão back in the day, back back in Braza. 
Just I world mean, champions. <laughs> just like a legend from our sport. Mm. And I knew, okay, I'm going to be like them one day, no matter, no matter what, no matter how long time I'll be waiting, but I'm going to be like them. I'm going to be a champion. I, I, I cannot be the same, two, five time world champion, but I want to be a champion, man. No matter what competition, no matter the championship, the, the title, IBJJF, uh, UAE, CB, CBJJ, I don't care. I want to I wanna compete and win. I want to compete and lose as well because you never lose in Jiu-Jitsu. You always learn it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so true. Or we win or we learn. We say it. It's true. Exactly. That's the way. And you were also saying about <clears throat> you were a few steps ahead. I don't know if you remember that when you were talking about like your mother when you were thinking about buying a house, before you buy the house, you told that you were a few steps ahead. What do you mean by that? Like, did you do like, did you visualize? I... That's the, that's, that's the thing. You had to vi visualize your, your life. If you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say dream. Dream, you can dream about anything, anything. But when you put gold and you fight for that and have the vision ahead. This drives you. This drives you. I always, I always have, since when I was Papa Bell, listen to me, since when I was Papa Bell, I started to work with my master, Ricardo Vieira, inside his team at Fight Zone Rio. I didn't know how to teach people Jiu Jitsu. But, was a process when he when he invited me to come it was just like a internship mm -hmm. how do you say a stage internship internship yeah internship internship i was a papa belt i started to work with him he was teaching the the, the the class and i was helping people around the mat right i was helping i was doing and i started to feeling wow this is good man I was feeling like I was, I was, I was getting a lot of information, a lot of information. This was kind of like, man, I want to be like my master one day. I want to have my own gym and I have, and I want to teach people. Since the Papa belt, my mind was already ahead because I put the, I put this in my book or oh, I want to have a, my gene, I want to make my, my student a champ. That's, that's the goal. That's drive you, you know, no matter timing or it's going to be quick or longer, no matter what, keep your work, keep pushing, keep striving, keep, you know, walking little by little, you know, Every day, one stone. It's like this, especially in life. You want to achieve something big, it's like this. Unless you're rich, you can just afford the, the, the gene of your dream. But I mean, no rich. I can't afford my dream, the gene of my dream. You know what I mean? You, you have to work. And then I start to know, I start to enjoy, you know, be around the mat, teaching people, talk to people, and then start speaking English with the, the with the, the guy who was visiting Fight Zone and then start to wow I'm speaking with this guy what am I saying you know and then I start to start get get connection okay and then I put in my mind okay I want this for my life in the future but I also had the, the, the house in my mind as well or not only the gym for they say oh I'm gonna buy a house first Make my mama comfortable first, and then I'm gonna train more. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna competing. Try to make some money, and get my gym somewhere else. I didn't say in Brazil, 
or in the United States or Europe. I did I didn't know about that, but but I, I said I want to have my own gym one day and teach people. That's that's called to be like a few steps ahead with gold, with gold that you work for. No, just buy the gold and wait in the sofa watching Netflix and popcorn. Doesn't work like that, my friend. No, you had to drive. You had to drive, you know, because that's the way we, we, we had to live the, our life. Even though sometimes, you know, you fail, mistakes coming, and people get depressed, and it doesn't want to work anymore, hide their, their self in a, in a blanket, in the house that doesn't want to go out just because something bad happened with, with, with him or with them, and they hide their self inside the house. No, man. Put yourself over there, man. Keep going. Better day will come. And just face your circumstance, you know, facing. That's the best way to, you know, to have a strong mindset, you know, to help you to drive yourself where you want to be in the, in the future, you know. That was my, my vision, you know. I visualize and, and keep pushing. I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing. I still have my small gym here in London, check Mark Hammersmith. Now we are in a lockdown, but I'm still welcome. I still have a few things to, you know, to fix it here on the business plan. I'm still like uh, getting a lot of information from around the world, especially once coming to, you know, how to manage a gym, how to get students. You have to have the skill as well. I'm still like a fighter. I'm still like a competitor. I want to compete, but not, 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 like, not like before. I want to make people champion now. I want to give it back. I want to help people. I want to help people reach their dreams, their goals. Some people, they don't want to compete, but they want to be on the mat training, help other people to become a world champion, to become a Pan American champion, or I don't know, European champion, you know? I... I saw this a lot when I was training fight zone Rio. Uh, many people at fight zone they was there only to train us to help us competitor to achieve our goal. And uh, and I appreciate every time I say an interview, I always thanks to them because they was the guy who was helping us, you know, to build this mindset, to build this like hunger, you know, inside to compete, you know. And also my master push us every day, you know, harder to, to make us a champion. That's why now I have this feeling. I want to do the same, you know, do the same. That's the way. Man, love it, love it, love it, love it. And no, and it's the way, no, since the beginning of the conversation, you are thankful to Tereré, to Ricardo Vieira, to Leo, to Fight Zone, to the people in Cantagallo, to the people that help you in Europe. So it's you are humble in all your conversation. It's I, I love it. And you were talking about I wanted to ask you two questions. Now it comes. Uh you were talking about facing uh your fears. What is your uh, what is for you the best way to improve your mindset? It comes with a question. The best way to improve your mindset. I think education is key. Education is key, you know, especially when you manage yourself to start to collect information from people who, who fail and eventually they succeed again. You know what I mean? I think we, I have a many, many reasons, you know, many reasons. I, I, I mean, no reason. I think I have a few examples, you know, in the sport, especially in jiu-jitsu. If I look at the Bu, Marco Buchecha, you know, I mean, the guy just broke his knee and 
on the on the running next 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 year he came back he won double gold again right also i think i would say my my godfather alan fifo he just competing winning all the fights at the world championship and then on the same final i guess otavio something happened with him he got para paralyzed you know because he hit the head he was paralyzed and then he went to the hospital we take care of him you know and then eventually with a, like a uh, fear he come back to to compete again now he's like legend competing all the AGP tour became one of the best guys you know in his division you know i think is that man the, the i don't feel like i mean everyone everyone everyone's gonna fail one day everyone i feel many times many many times but this never let me down always put me up up to what to keep my feet on the ground and learn from that to do better on the next you know we will fail in some point in our life that's no doubt we're gonna lose we're gonna win a championship we're gonna lose a, a interview for a job not only in jiu-jitsu but i'm talking about in general you know we will but one thing that we cannot lose is our fear we have to keep driving because the fear is the is the is the way to reach our goal and the failure is our teacher you know teach us to be even more humble you know because that's makes makes i re realize reflect and make us to understand you know the the situation you no know? because you had to reflect you had to always looking for both sides sometimes three sides to see which one you're gonna you're gonna pick because that's why this this teach you you know i don't think people people have to to be scared of fail no take it as a as a as a lesson you know as a lesson and and keep pushing man nobody's nobody's perfect but you gotta do you gotta do your best you know nobody's perfect but you have you have to commit that you're gonna do better on the next you have to commit otherwise you're gonna you're gonna stay back and stay where, where you are getting depressed you know hiding for from the society you know doing something else i don't know but no man would have faced that again and go again if you fail again try again that's the best way to to you know to face your your fear fear is like uh, is middle no hey exactly 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 Mid, exactly, huh? exactly yeah no love it love it and it comes like with the questions like which lesson uh do you take from being a, a world-class champion like uh, uh how it's the way that you work um uh, some lessons uh, in the level of consistency if you if you can give some advice maybe for for somebody that it's in the same path 
Ah, you always said the consistency is key, you know, dedication, discipline is key as well. I think if you want to reach your goals, uh, I think discipline had to be had to be in the first line. You had to always measure measure your 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 daily daily day, you know. Not everything about training hard, training hard, training hard. No, you had to divide your training. You had to train hard. You had to drill. You had to study. You had to read books and you had to watch a documentary that's gonna benefit for your mind. Also, have a a health relationship. No matter who is gonna be with you, have always a health relationship. Because this can also uh, divide the a little bit the the hunger you have sometime when you're training, and then and then once you go to to home, you gotta always try to be like nicely. Don't be like a uh, a guy that knows everything with ego. No, keep your keep your ego on the door outside of the door and. Try to build like a good relationship that the people you hang out. And that's the discipline, you know. You know, training constantly, of course, always try to evolve, try to always uh, create something that's going to benefit for you and also for the people who are around you as well, not only for yourself, because jiu-jitsu is a, is, a, is, a, is a martial art that needs two people to evolve and to learn together. You don't learn it by yourself, and also you don't win a championship, a championship by yourself because you need people to train with you as well. That's why you have to appreciate every single person on the mat, especially your coach, that's gonna be there every day for you to teach you a lesson and to teach you uh, the way that you have to go. You know, um, dedication. You know, is uh, something that's have to come from you as well, from your mind as well. And how I said discipline and also um, be be a, a role model, you know, be a role model, you know, is also a key for inspire other people to do the same thing that you are doing, you know. So, like I said in the beginning, Terere, Alain, Ricardo was my mirror. And I was try to always doing the same thing like they, they did, you know. So and I'm still like have them as a mirror, you know. And I also have other guys like like as well, like Roger as well. I like the way Roger approaches it, so the way he speaks to people, very nicely, very calm. Bushesha, the way he deal with his life as well, very nice guy, very humble, always smile, always you know involved with people, you know. My Leo Vieira is a, uh, for me is a is a for me is like a, our, si 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 Wikipedia, make fala, I don't know in English. Um, Wikipedia, don't fala Wikipedia. 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 Our Wikipedia, you know, because it's the guy to you know to sit and talk. You can talk for a long time. You're gonna always answer your question in a nice way. And my master as well is the guy who I always bring the, you know, the vibe, the love, you know, I, I love to be surrounded by my master as well. We, we, we always laugh. That's the healthy relationship you have to, you know, you need to have around you. No one about say fuck in a, in a train, or oh, tomorrow train again. No, it's not that. It's not that. You have to enjoy. You have to enjoy every single day. Of course, during the training, you, you are in focus, focus. But once the, the training finish, you have to enjoy. You know, if you don't enjoy your training when you're on the mat with your friends, I think you you are lost. You're gonna put so much pressure on top of yourself that once you compete, if you lose, you're gonna get depressed. This is gonna kill you inside. You know. The best way, train happy, fight happy. That's it. That's the best way. 
you know? Really? That's the best way for me. You know, that's my advice, man. Have a discipline, dedication, respect as well. It's the most important thing as well. <laughs> and respect for your own self as well. You know, dealing with your diet, you know, people, anything, you know? And I create a, and, and build a healthy relationship be, between you and your training partner and master, you know? That's it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. And it's five great advice, not, not only for, for, for to become a world champion, but I think in life you can apply that in any circumstance, if you want to succeed yeah. in any circumstance in life. And now it comes, uh, I wanted to ask you, How it is now the difference between between being a professional fighter and becoming a businessman? Like I, like I said in the beginning, education is key. You know what I mean? I love I love I love uh, listen to to Fabio Gugel podcast because he's a uh, For me, is uh is the guy where I learned the most as well about manager gym because he have this course about um um how how to live with jiu jitsu you know vive jiu jitsu you mm -hmm. know and uh and I did the course as well and 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 in the, in that course he teach you from the from the beginning you know. But as a as a as a professional athlete and and be always on the gym, I know a few things how things work. You know, I wants to work at the fight zone reception. I was a receptionist at the fight zone as well, and I uh, I was seeing how things work in the gym. But today we have a different system. We have a computer. We have a software. It's kind of like easy, you know, to integrate a business model to a f software and then you just like carry on. But you have to study because now I'm, a, I'm, still, I'm still a competitor, but I'm still like a reading book from Jiu Jitsu. You know, I have a Carlos Gracie here. I have a Open Cross God. I'm learning about the history of Jiu Jitsu as well. I'm not just about uh, only teach people techniques and go home. No, I wanna be able to to teach up uh, uh, my class where I can stop for maybe 10 minutes and talk about my background or maybe check my background or maybe Leo Zin's background or my master Kadavira background for they understand what's coming behind Jiu Jitsu. It's not about only the technique and the fight and the, the competition. It's the, it's the mindset, it's the philosophy, it's the history that's gonna hold the people on the mat. I'm not, I'm not like a whole in the theme of business, but the people who are coming to the class, they don't, they don't want to only to train in jiu-jitsu, train hard. Some people, maybe people they want to, to hear, maybe, a little word, just like a, a word that's gonna make them feel like, wow, this is, this is nice, I never heard about it. And then this is gonna make it then realize that if it start to go back to the gym again, you're gonna learn more from this. And then after that, you're gonna be able to come in to the court and ask more questions, oh, how this work? When this start? You know, it's like this, but you cannot give at once because if you give at once, You know, some people are gonna take it. Some people don't realize that it's not for me. But by step, a little bit, say a few words, a little bit, because that's the way it had to be. But you had to have the knowledge to pass it on. You had to read, you had to search, you had to speak to people, you know, because as a, as a businessman, you know, You, you are dealing not only with people, but also with their healthcare mindset. And, and of course, money is about, is on the side. It's a business, of course, there's money because you are running the gym. But 
the most important thing that you have to, to provide for, for, for your student is a, a good service where they can feel like part of the team, part of the company who are, who are part of the jujitsu community. I'm not say team, but community, you know? So I think uh, for, my, for my vision, um, studying, read the book, watching a document, there's a lot of information on YouTube. Learn a little bit the history of Gracie family as well. You know, try to, you know, understand, you know, who was Elio, you know, try to, you know, don't need to, you don't need to know everything. But if you know a little bit, it's okay. Because I, I'm not for the Gracie family. I had to talk about my, my, my line, like, de -de -de, info, you know, I know their background. I know where they are come from. I know their history. I can talk about them, but it's, it's nice to also bring a little bit the Gracie family, you know, in the book, you know, because they was the, 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 the creator. They was the guy who developed Jiu Jitsu. We, you gotta always to appreciate their work that they done in, in, a, in, a, in a few years ago. Now we are here training just just because then was there in the United States, you know, fighting, I guess, karate guys, you know, uh, luta livre, I guess, jiu-jitsu, you know, wrestling, I guess, jiu-jitsu. There was that to build the name that we have today. So everything about like, integrate yourself to commit to learning and study to get information to pass it on for your for your student and then we're gonna be a good successful businessman and a coach love it love it and i see like education it's the foundation like you you couldn't not it's not because you are a world-class black belt or bec that you stop study your art and it's like you approach the same way the business also so if i'm becoming a owner of uh, of a, a gym i will start i will search somebody that knows about the subject and i will study about it exactly i love it i, love uh, I mean it. i i love the fact that we don't need to go to our university to to study for like let's say five years Lose like five years of, of, you're not gonna lose, of course, you're gonna gain a lot to study for five years and then you can go for look for job. I appreciate everyone who does that, you know, I, I respect a lot of them. But for me, it was more about like learning, learning from everybody. From every place I go, I, I, I like to learn something. If I am in London, I like to learn about the history of London or the culture or, or the people. I like to always go for like museum, you know, uh, go to like a culture party from in, in the UK. If I'm in, in Berlin, I like to always go to the place where about the history, about the, the war, you know, or wherever I go, I like to always go for for history place. Why? Because this makes you humble, makes you feel like we are you are you still like searching for for information. Because this is good for you to pass for your future, like kids, or have a, a conversation with someone who knows better better the, the subject. And then you can come bro. I went to Germany, I went to Berlin, but there's a wall there that the guy put it down. Why, why, what happened? And then if you know someone who knows better than me, you're gonna have a nice conversation. They're gonna tell you, you know, but if you have the right questions well, because people are not gonna just come to you and tell everything. You have to have the right question, you know? If you have the right question, you're gonna be able to, to get some information, but if you don't have the wrong, the right question, it's gonna be hard, mm -hmm. you know? I think it, um, for everything, you know, education is key. You gotta always 
find a way to work, learning something, we'll be able to apply in the future. It can be in the gym or in the life or in life. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now one question. One lesson that you that you are taking from this COVID situation. Ooh, I think that's the, the COVID situation. I mean, I think it was for me personally it was um I I think for me personally it was good, you know. Why? Because because I adapt myself to to a new routine, you know. In the beginning it was a little bit depressing. I was just at home doing nothing, just like not uh, watch documentary on Netflix and reading. But but I but I felt that I was missing something, you know. I had to do something. And then I just contact my friend, you know, and, and asking him if he could send me the link to, to sign up for the, just to be, I was just about to do a course to become a personal trainer, you know? So my whole lockdown in the UK, all the pandemic here in the UK, I was studying. I was doing uh, an online course. I mean, where I'm doing level two, level three, personal training. And also, on the same year, I became a Ginástica Natural level three instructor, you know. And with this information, it was nothing to do with Jiu Jitsu because I didn't have the chance to build like an online training for my student because my student um they 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 were of course i don't have a lot of students and then some some of them they live alone they don't have a training partner to train together but i keep i kept in touch with them on whatsapp talk to a few to a few people but i decided to carry on with my course which make me feel like wow it was really hard in the beginning because after a long time away from the school from read a book in the hand because my my actually now uh, reading the book in the in the computer was really hard for me to have like a uh, constantly reading for like hours to understand also the body the muscle you know the bones you know, the head, everything about, you know, fitness and training program for me was everything new. But I kept my, my, I keep, I keep going, you know, I didn't realize, I didn't realize this could be harder, but I keep going. I keep going, I keep pushing. And today I got level, uh, uh, today I have a level, level two first. I finished my level two. Now I'm finishing my level three. Why so long? Because I I froze my my membership as well because I I travel to to Sweden to training with my my god uh, my godfather Alain, to train with the guy from UFC, and then from there I went to to Dubai and spent a few few weeks in Dubai, and then I came back to London for one week and then. I went back to Dubai again for Christmas and New Year, and that's why I froze my my course. And then now I came back from Dubai. Now I'm mean, work on uh, level three to finish. But everything was very good, you know. I I decided to do that just because it was something that I have in mind for a long time as well when I came to the UK, you know. And I and I asked my 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 coach Omid how how he became a personal trainer. He, he said to me he did like a course for six months and then he just became a personal trainer like this. And I told him, man, if he was in Brazil, you had to study 
maybe five years to become a personal trainer. How come you just start six months your personal training here? You know what I mean? Because the, the country is a is a few years ahead from Brazil, you know, in terms of like education or other things or system, you know. In Brazil, you still have to start like for a few years. In here, you start for six months, you're a personal trainer. You know what I mean? So and then I decide to, I put this in mind that one day maybe I could do it. But I could do it because I was competing, I was traveling, and then I was very busy. But when the pandemic came, I think I I adapt this um, this course to my routine, and and from there just pushing, study, understand the you know physiology, you know, very very hard, but it was it was good, it was good. I'm oh. very proud and I'm very proud and uh, and I'm looking forward to finish my level three now. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. No, and and like I see, like, like you were saying, you could being in the corner crying about it, or you adapt yourself and let's say let's do a course, let's start studying something else. Like yeah. it's a way of seeing opportunity. Uh, can you just give what is uh, uh, natural gin uh, gymnastic? Gymnastica natural. Exactly. Ginástica natural is a is a full body exercise where where is the the benefits is is kind of, it's kind of good because you you use the whole body you know you're gonna increase your stab stabilization core strength uh, endurance speed agility but depend what kind of training you wanna do if you wanna do a, a easy training. You know, it's more about like uh, flow movement. But if you want to do like a moderation training, you know, you can create like a few exercise that's gonna compromise to your body. But if you want to do a, a little bit more high intensity, we have uh, also good like training for that. But Ginastica Natural was, was, was created by Alvaro Romano, you know, back in Brazil. And and today he he have 66 years old but he's still training like a young boy you know and he just developed this this method for for jiu jitsu in the beginning by now is a is a is a training for all the martial art and fitness people you know everybody can can apply gymnastics natural in anywhere you know and I'm and I uh, and I'm very happy because I always knew about the Ginastica Natural because when you do the the warm up in Jiu Jitsu we do the Ginastica Natural we can do a few like uh, movement from them and and I always knew about this and um, and this year I I managed to to do the course with my coach Rafael Romano you know. It, and I became a uh, le uh, level three instructor. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, and, man. please. Yeah, it's very good. I think that's the, the that's the the way to keep my mind busy, because you have to develop your own moves sometimes, create your own combo, create your own sequence of movement, and also create training for people who are who are interested in, in training. So you have to always study, understand the muscle, understand the bones, understand you know, which part of the body you're gonna be working. So I think this is very important as well. It's not just about the, the movement or to show the movement. It's about getting people in the right mindset and understand the, the principle and the foundation of the, the, the gymnastica. I think that's the key. Love it, love it, love it. And you are talking about routines. Do you have any daily routines, morning routines? Yeah, I have. Every morning I wake up early in the morning, you know, I have a cup of tea or coffee and I read for at least one hour, you know. And after that, I go back to my 
my course, I studied for three hours. It, this one, I don't have a, no class in the morning, but I had to always stay focused in my course. I, I worked for three hours in my course. And then after that, I go make lunch, you know, rest a little bit and then do some training by myself here. And then now in the pandemic, in the lockdown, of course, I'm mean, doing that right now. But if I was, if it wasn't no lockdown here, I'll be like on the gym training and doing something else. You know what I mean? But in this lockdown, I mean, doing all of this, you know, wake up in the morning, coffee, study for three hours, reading and training, cooking and teach people online. I think that's my routine I'm having right now. But without the lockdown, I would be out training with my students, teaching people, or maybe, I don't know, go for a museum or search for, for some information. And yeah, um, because, you know, London, you know, has a lot to offer. You know, it's a big city, always have a lot of things to do and I feel good. It's true. Uh, how, uh, now, to, how it was the change? Like, uh, it was in 2012, the change to London, no? Uh, 2000, yeah, it was 2012, but I came to London 2011 for the first time as a invitation from my, from my friend, Luis Manchinha, who is the owner of uh, London Fight Factory. And uh, he was the guy who who brought me to London for the first time from Portugal. When, uh, when, um, actually, sorry, it was 2012, 2012, because 2011, I went to Portugal, but I did, it came to London, I just went back to Brazil. And 2012, I came again, I won the European as a brown belt, and then I came to London for the first time. And yeah, yeah. And the change, the, the weather, the change, uh, how it is, uh, uh, the, do you like it? Are you seeking to right? go back to, to Brazil? Uh, I mean, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could have the same opportunity that I'm having here in London, in Brazil. Unfortunately, um, I can't afford, I don't have the same opportunity over there, but I can still like find a job as a coach in some gym, of course, but it's not going to be the same like, like here, you know, um, I love my country, man. I love my country. I love my family. You know, I like to be there as well. I like to always, when I go to Brazil, I spend a good time there. I like to visit other, other cities and yeah, but I think London is, a uh, is different, you know, is a mutual culture and has a lot to offer in terms of education, you know, it's very, it's very like open, open mind as well. And, and of course it's very cold, <laughs> but in the summer it's very beautiful. Even, even in the winter time it's very beautiful as well because I, lo I love the fashion. I like to go out and see people dress. I like to go to the street and see how people walk on the street dressing how they you know how people enjoy you know the 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 society um outside you know people having coffee walking buying stuff and yeah i like i love the the vibe i think london has a beautiful vibe and uh mm -hmm. and i feel so so honored to be able to live in a city Live in a city that that we where we still have the 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 monarchy, you know. We have a queen, you know, prince. You know, it's so nice. It's so nice. You know, it's so nice to you know to live in a country where you you can see you you know watch you know the queen you know the prince because I used to watch this in on a TV you know now I'm watching like live you know sometimes when i walk around in the uh, in a uh, westminster or parking palace you know you can see like see some move um a lot of people around see what's going on so it's so nice i think it's nice i, I like it mm. i like it 
And for you that you love history, I think it's it's a really nice country to live like with the monarchy. Yeah. I think it's really nice. So I will yeah. try to be cut to don't because I know that you have something else to do in a little bit. So I I will go I will go first. So what is your definition of success? Definition. Definition I of think, success. Uh, resilience. I think, um, yeah, I think I'm very like resilient, uh, resilient, how do you say? Resilience, yeah, 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 it's correct. Resilience, resilience. And I don't, I don't give up so easy, you know, I like to, I like to work hard, you know. Um, sometimes when, I, I, I mean, sometimes it's hard to, to be positive every day, to push yourself every day, but you gotta do something at least for for a few for a few minutes or for an hour, you know. Push a little bit, you know. Even though um, the hard times come, you gotta always be prepared for anything. But I think I have a lot of willpower, you know, and dedication, you know. I think I'm very resilient, you know. I like the way I deal with my my life. I like to, you know, to help people. I like to learn. I like to, you know, learn from other people. And I like to be humble with my feet on the ground without any any bad, like, bad vibes, you know. I try to always surround myself with good people, with good vibe and... I think that's the I think that's the health life that you can you can live for. So I think I think it's that. Love it, love it, love it. Um I wanted to ask you also what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? The legacy I want to leave behind. Ah man. The legacy I want to leave behind is is to to the people when they think about me, um, they they look at me as a as a as a whole model or as a mirror for for their for their life. You know, I'm I'm not saying that only only because I did win a lot of world title. You know, uh, I would, I would, I wouldn't, I would inspire people. I think just because of my personality, the way I deal with my life every day, the way I approach myself, the way I, uh, I do things, even though I have a lot of bad things around, failings and good ups, ups down. I don't think nothing can can bother me, can make me feel like I can't do anything else, you know. I think that's the, the best way to always keep pushing and keep, you know, learning from from your mistake, from your past and and try to make a, a better vision of yourself to inspire other people because you're not going to inspire everybody, you know. Also, you're not going to have a lot of people who we're gonna support you, we're gonna like you, we're gonna love you. And I know that. I don't have to to please nobody, you know. But I just wanna make sure I mean deliver a, a good legacy where I'll be able to at least if I can if I can support, if I can inspire ten percent of people, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy because there's a lot of like uh good athletes right there. Who has a lot of title? Who inspire more than than hundred people, hundred hundred percent of people, you know. So I'm mean, fine with my ten or twenty, I know. And of course, I'm gonna try to always to increase this number and to reach the hundred percent. I have like a lot of people, you know, living, you know, by my inspiration, my legacy. You know, when they look back in and watch me fight or watch my videos or watch my 
documentaries or, or interviews. I wish uh, I wish this can make a little bit like impact in their life and motivate them to don't give up on their goals for them reach their dreams in the future. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I think it's a great. It can be one life for 1,000 or 10,000. It's already a mission accomplished, <laughs> yeah. I think. You are yeah. thinking well. Uh, to end, I want also to ask you, uh, you are saying about reading. One book that you will recommend me, to me, the listeners and the viewers to read? One or two books? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some pick up here. I'm gonna Please. show you two. That's the... The Travel Rules for Life, that's the one from Jordan Peterburn. Okay. Yes, yes. That's the one. I, I already read this one, but I love so much. I'm reading again because this makes me feel very motivated. That's the the champion's mind. Okay, never read this one. Okay. Okay, thank you. And the legend. Robin Bryan, the Mamba mentality. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. To, to end up, just a last question. A uh, tip to make the world a better place. I I would say love is key, but not everybody has the same vision. We are totally different from each other, but if we can manage a system where you can implant loving love in everybody's heart, I think the words can be better. We, we're gonna be we're gonna be like more solidarity and more like more like you're gonna care more about others you know i think it's like that but in this world where everybody uh are looking for many things you know i'm not gonna say anything bad here because i don't want to finish it very i don't want to finish this conversation bad but we have a lot of um we have a lot of I would say we we are in in general we know like, like equal, you know. Mm. Some people has a lot, has people some have a less. Some people have nothing, you know. And some people that have a lot that they don't really care about who, what don't have anything. So I know some people do they care about, but some people don't. Imagine if we all the people who has a lot of things, a lot of money, can you know help the people who doesn't so i think this is love this can can change something but i think a love is key to 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 make uh the world a better place and but to do that we have to find a way to implant this love in the in the people's heart i think that's the that's that's the like the mindset we just come from my my, you know, it is, it is. Love I is the key. I yeah. think, like right. Jackson, any last thoughts or advice that you want to share with me and the listeners, please? Uh, yeah, I think I talk all. You know, I think this this podcast is gonna be very, very good for those who listen to podcasts. I'm just starting. Um, listen to a lot of podcasts as well. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, I always said everything. I'm just happy uh, about this opportunity to be able to share a little bit of my background, my you know knowledge, life, and accomplishment. You know, so but. For me, it's the most important thing. What I can say for you guys: keep, stay low key, and keep working hard, and and never give up on your goals. Because dreaming, we have 
all the time. But once you put once you put God first, this is gonna drives you to reach your dream. Okay, that's the a mindset that I have, you know, and still work very well for me. And I hope this can help you, you know, to achieve your your dreams. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, just can you give just a, a little message to in Portuguese for the ones that I want to do a little clip for the ones that are maybe in, uh, in Cantagalo, please, and fighting and okay. please. Ok, the idea. Valeu, galera. Quero só deixar aqui um recadinho aqui. Aqui é o Jackson Souza falando. E quero que vocês entendam uma coisa que vocês possam entender o que é o bom, o que é o ruim para para nossas vidas. Que vocês tenham sempre essa essa divisão na mente de vocês para poder tomar decisões corretas que não possa interferir no seu dia a dia ou no seu futuro. Então Tenta sempre ter em mente que a educação é a melhor solução para ter uma boa visão, entendeu? Para que você possa conseguir cons possa conseguir realizar seus objetivos, mas sempre botando metas na frente. Porque sonho, a gente, a gente sempre acredita nos sonhos, mas a gente precisa ter metas primeiro para poder alcançar o nosso sonho. Então, põe em meta, trabalhe firme para isso acontecer porque dali que vai vai se tornar o seu seu sonho, beleza? Então, se cerquem de pessoas que tenha mais conhecimento que você, estudem, é, seja humilde e respeite um ao outro, seus pais, sua mãe, quem for, seus professores, seus primos, todo mundo e mantenha uma uma relação uma relação bem saudável com com as pessoas que vocês andam. Beleza? Um grande abraço. Thank you so much, Jackson. Thank you so much, man. Have a great day and a great life. After I will put the Instagram in the description of the video, okay? For somebody if they want okay. to contact you. It was yeah, a great you, pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much.